for the first time I thought to myself, what if my leaders had made a mistake? I came to America to chase the American dream and it wasn't long before I started my own cosmetic business with my brother. And through a lot of hard work and effort, we brought some very new and innovative products into the cosmetic industry in the mass market. And it wasn't long before I began to experience the, the pleasures and the success of that. I was driving around town in a red Maserati. And I had model girlfriends. Um, and I was really sort of chasing that, that life, but it was really a, a God that I was after. As a child, I was always looking to know God, and I was searching for Him all throughout my childhood, and, and I have to be honest, I couldn't find Him in the synagogue experience. I found it religious, uh, the women were concerned about what they looked like and what they were wearing, uh, there was a lot of materialism going on. I was actually looking for a spiritual connection. So I was beginning to experience the high life. Beautiful restaurants, a single lifestyle, money in my pocket, uh, driving a red Maserati, and in comes this beautiful girl named Maria, makeup artist I started to work with. And it's like I had it all, but something wasn't quite right. And the interesting thing was is that Maria was, there was something different about her. She just didn't seem to be too interested in in everything that I was sort of living up at that particular time. And she started to explain her faith to me as a Christian girl. She presented her faith to me in a, in a way that I could understand that a belief in Yeshua was, was, uh, had a Jewish foundation. And it was so different from, from like my synagogue experience. You know, here I was looking for God, looking for a relationship, and she seemed to have this dimension and this intimacy and this connection. And here I was, the child of Abraham, the Jewish guy, and I seemed to have nothing. It was almost like I was a Jekyll and a Hyde, two type of personalities, like this young, successful entrepreneur during the day and at night, I was empty and a depression was setting in that I couldn't contain. But I wouldn't let anyone see me. It was almost like in the world we, we have a facade that everything's wonderful and okay, and yet inwardly it's, it's not like that. There was a, a depression and, a, and an emotional change that I was beginning to get in touch with, and definitely something was wrong. I think what was really different about Maria is that she had learned to bring the message of Yeshua back to Jewish people as if it was their very own. We reviewed a lot of the, in some of our discussions, we, we talked about all the terrible things that had happened to the Jewish people in the name of Christianity and how Christianity has been used. And she worked very hard in her communication to separate that stuff, mainly most of the same time saying that most of those people really weren't believers in the first place. And she began to, so she began to lay this foundation for me that the roots of Christianity were completely Jewish. And of course, you know, when I began to open the scripture and read for myself, I was overwhelmed. I was so surprised, okay, that I was actually reading a Jewish book. So I have to, I have to tell you after you know, experiencing this dimension that I knew Maria was experiencing between her and God, it began to really get my attention. And so it caused me to begin to go after, once again, a relationship with my own God. And so I went into my bedroom for three weeks, seven days a week, every night. I got on my knees and I prayed. I tried to talk to God. And it was like my prayers went up to the ceiling and dropped right down to the floor. There was nothing, no connection. And I was frustrated. I mean, here Maria was, this Christian girl that had a relationship with my God, the God of Abraham. And here I was, a Jew, trying to have a relationship with my God, the God of Abraham, and nothing. I was disconnected. And so it 
caused me to get very frustrated. And one night we were out for dinner and I expressed that frustration. And she turned around to me. She said, Grant, I have been trying to tell you for six to eight months, almost every time we go out, you can't have the father without the son. So immediately, I decided I've got to go upstairs. I go upstairs to my apartment and um, was not difficult for me with all my spiritual experiences to, to visualize this whole thing. And um, I laid on the bed and I stretched out my arm in the shape of a, the crucifixion tree. And I shut my eyes and Maria had told me about a scripture, Revelations 3.20, I'll, I'll never forget it. I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens that door, I will come into him and he will hear my voice and we will sup together. In other words, we will connect and have intimacy. So I close my eyes and I visualize the door and I knocked on the door and I said, God of Abraham, if Yeshua is, this is the exact prayer I prayed, if Yeshua is your son and the Jewish Messiah, I want to know the truth. Right at that moment, at that very second, a physical wind indwelt my stomach. I could, I could almost see it swooshing into me. And I was, got up uh, from the bed, I was startled. But from that moment on, I believed.